now we're back with another banger. So Oscar de la Hoya, we all know this guy is one of the most controversial promoter out there right now because he's no longer active as a fighter. So recently he dissed His Excellency Turkey Lashik, uh, but uh, he found out real quick that this uh, Turkey Lashik is not a a guy to take for granted, basically, and he immediately kind of uh, apologized and gave Turkey Lashik his props. You know, he DM Turkey Lashik and said and said this. Your Excellency, as a legend, the boxing and a humble human being, I thank you for putting a terrific card in Los Angeles. Angeles, I appreciate you and respect you. This was basically days after Oscar de la Hoya said nobody can come to a city, and you know, ah, uh, to to us or his country and think they can take over boxing. He's a fighter first. And he will fight hard for what he loves the most, and that's boxing and Biba Mexico or Biba America. I don't know which one he meant, but it's a Biba meaning long live something like that. So, what do you guys make of His Excellency Turkey Lashik saving boxing? I know we haven't really, uh, you guys haven't really given your take on this, and uh, be nice to hear from you guys because I know that. <clears throat> Adewale, for example, felt very, <clears throat> very, very disappointed. You know, in boxing, the politics in boxing is like really crazy. Tokyo Lashi has come in and put, you know, and uh, put on a great card, and he's even taking Riyadh season to America. That's crazy, bro. Adewale, your take on Tokyo Lashi? Okay, let me let me start with the Oscar De La Hoya conversation. I feel like because I I also have a very militant mindset. If I'm being honest, me personally, I don't feel comfortable calling just any random person. Oh, His Excellency. Oh, but all of a sudden, all these guys, Eddie Hearn, Frank Warren, they're all saying His Excellency. They are benefiting financially from the relationship. Now, me as a boxing fan. So what do you call? What, what do you? The, what do you call him then? What, to what, me, it's just uh, Dr. Well, uh, well but is this a sense of bro? I know the reason why. Let me tell why you why. Let me tell you why I, I do respect the guy, though. Let me tell you what, bro. I respect Turkey Alashik, especially for investing his money in America, because that shows that they are going above and beyond to capture boxing fans all over the world, and they have the money. So I respect that. And the guy is a real boxing fan. This guy has given us like great fights back to back since October 2023. And we have his full schedule up until August 2024. Man, salutes to Tokyo Lashik. Okay. Oscar De La Hoya with his commentary saying that, oh, nobody can come to my city. He was just being militant minded, you know not wanting to respect a random person, you know, until that person actually deserves the respect. And I guess with Tokyo putting that show in August in the U.S., earned Oscar De La Hoya's respect. And that's all what that was, in my opinion. That's what I have to say about that. But salute to Tokyo. I'm grateful for, for Tokyo Alashik. We're getting so many fights. Um, this is a good time to be a boxing fan. Bro, I respect you for one thing. You always keep it real, but there is no no way in hell that uh, that Oscar de la Hoya. There's nothing Oscar de la Hoya, Oscar de la Hoya, Oscar de la Hoya has over Turkey Alashik. Although, apart from good health, because Alashik uh, seems like uh, he he he's not gonna live long, you know. Um, because yeah, he has some health issues he's dealing with, and it's very severe, according to what I heard. I don't know. He even said it himself. That it doesn't, it doesn't have much to live for now. Like, I, I'm sad about it though, in a way. But I think that this is why we're seeing all these fights, bro. I I wish Toki speedy recovery. Miracles happen, man. Mister Toki, I, I, I don't think I, I don't think there's miracle for this, bro. But I'm but I'm gonna say one thing, bro. 
I, I can't blame you can't say Turkey has nothing. I mean, rather, De La Hoya has nothing over Turkey apart from health. You can't say that, bro. I mean, if just because you have less money than someone else does not mean you are less than the person. No, no, no. Oscar De La Hoya has more money than Turkey, like uh, officially. Officially. You know? Uh, Turkey is oh, worth be... Turkey is worth twenty million. Oscar oh, is worth Oscar De La Hoya is worth fifty, but we all know oh. in, in reality that's not the case. It's just like so, the, 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 these uh, folks and stuff like, like that. Man, Turkey has access to. He has a line of credit of like five, seven billion dollars, bro. <laughs> Turkey Lashika is the owner of Ameria. You know Ameria? No, you don't. You don't watch football. Um, no, I don't. Ameria is the. It was a a club. Is a club in uh, in La Liga now, but they used to be battling. Uh, um, they were battling uh, relegation. Basically, we rele- relegated basically a few years ago, and they couldn't come back until Turkey Lashik bought it. And two years after he bought it and invested in it, so they go back to La Liga. Now they are even that's where a Nigerian uh, footballer played there. This guy, something like Osman Mohamed or something, plays there. Very very good club anyway, and they are also climbing up step by step. It's not just going in there putting money and then you know say okay like trying to build it like out uh, of Man City for example. He's doing it gradually as well, so so that you don't. You know, you don't become suspect in a way. That's good. Yep. So, uh, well, I hope he lives long, but it doesn't look like he's going to live long. According to him, you know, he has, he's like he's on his last run now. You know, it's one of those things, man. Now, wow. Tajakbe, your take on Turkey and Ashik and Oscar Oye bowing down to, of course, his SLSE. I say his SLSE, but <laughs> I say because uh, I, I did my research. You know, with before Tokyo Ship we had uh Prince Khalid. He was known as Prince. He's um uh I think uh how do you call Prince in how do you, you don't call them you it's one of the royals. It was one of the Prince Khalid was one is one of the royals, Saudi. But Tokyo Lashik is not I think he's not dead. Um, yeah. Literally yeah. You hear me? Yeah, bro. Uh, I, I, I'm trying to get uh, yeah, but uh, uh, he's not. Yes, he, he has to mute. Anyway, let's get you on here, bro. So your take? I know you have. I'm, I, bro, where have you been, man? You, you need to come back to Amsterdam, bro. <laughs> I will see you this summer. I will see you. If actually, uh, I've got a, uh, a trip planned for this yeah. summer. I'll be there for this summer. Yeah. That guy, you need to DM, man. You need to DM. Move, 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 man. Carry. No, the last time you come here, I know carry and tell some please. <laughs> Respectfully, <laughs> I know, I know, that went on Zanga. No, Allah, you too much, brother. Mm-hmm. Yeah, man. Um, I think I, the first thing I'd like to I'd like to address is, is the issue of calling him the His Excellency or Prince this or see. Um, so what I'm made to understand is that now in that region, people are addressed by their titles. You understand. If you're a prince, say for an example, you are Efe. Your name is Efe. They're not just going to call you Efe. They're going to call you by your title and your name, Prince Efe. Right? So, um, His Excellency, that is how they address him, even over there. For example, if you remember the prince we had, the guy that came into boxing before Tokyo Allah Sheikh, I think it's Prince, prince Khalid. Khalid. Yeah. Yes. You know, you would you would notice that every time people address him, they address him as prince. So 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 so, you know. So it's just a cultural thing. I don't think it's more of a thing of um, licking his ass. You know, it's not. I think I, I think Americans uh, or people who live in America, like who live in North America, like uh, Adewale, they see things very different. Yeah, of course, of course. Like I said, it's a cultural thing. You know. You know, it's a culture. I think, for an example, like in 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 in, I'm a Yoruba guy from Nigeria. Um, you know, you would address someone who is older than you, even if that person is not related to you as brother, so so so. It's just a sign of respect, as opposed to yeah, you calling yeah, the, the same, person the same way. Name. The same way I'm from, man. You know, in in a donor, if you see somebody older than you, you say a pa or something like that. You know, just for respect. You know. Yes. Uh, yes. So. But, 
Yeah, bro. Yeah, it's, it's more of it's, it's more of a cultural thing. So but but just, don't just, we don't we address our governors in Nigeria like his excellency? Yeah, we do. We do. Yeah, yeah, we do. So I mean, not not the, not me. I don't call. I don't. I don't, I don't really care about it. But I mean, if you are addressing them, they are, I don't know what they're excellent about. But anyway, I don't do anything for the country. <laughs> I don't more <laughs> more that part. I beg. Continue. <laughs> okay. Anyway, um. Ah, oh, where do I even start? So, Oscar de la Hoya. You know, I have very, I have big respect for Oscar. Um, in terms of what he's done in boxing, not only as a boxer, even as a promoter. You know, to be fair to Oscar, this guy has made um, a lot of stars, including Canelo. You know, he has literally, he literally built Canelo from the scratch. You know, so he's he's done a lot of good things in boxing. However. I think that Oscar is a little bit over his head, like, you know. I think sometimes, and we all know that Oscar has got issues with, you know, drug abuse and all of that. I don't know if he's completely sober now, but um, he behaves in a, I don't know, in a very strange way sometimes, you know. Um, I remember when he had a round table meeting with Eddie Earn. He was very respectful. He was very cordial. But then, as soon as he had the opportunity to conduct his first interview. He started lashing out again. He started, you know, you know, saying that Adrian is not is not a good promoter. He should go back to the UK. As a matter of fact, um, he went on David David. Um, is it, 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 no, no, not David. Um, Haney. Is that his first? What's his first name again? The boxer. Devin yeah, Haney. David. Haney. De- Devin. Yeah. Yeah. You know, so Devin Haney um, posted a picture of himself and. Um, um, at the end. And Oscar went there and commented, well, if that's what you're going to have it beside you, blah, 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 you know, I see how far that's going to get you and all of that. You know, Devin Ernie has already achieved a lot. He was undisputed at 135. He still current 140 WC, WBC champion. So I, I just think that Oscar has a bit of, I don't want to call him a hater, but I think he's got a bit of hate and jealousy in his bone. Because he had a problem with Canelo, then he's, he had a problem, and I believe he still has a problem with his current fighter, um, um, Ryan Garcia. And then this whole thing of attacking Eddie Hearn all the time. Then he tried it with Tokyo al and then only for him to turn, turn, you know, just to take his word back, and he was like, oh, I respect you, and blah, blah, blah. So I just think that Oscar needs to kind of stay in his lane. Um, all these attacks, see, everyone is working for the for the good of the sport. And I think that Oscar should also align with everybody else. You know, he can't do it alone. He's not the biggest. Even if it's, it's, Oscar should actually be reinforcing right now. You know, um, Eddie Hearn went to America and literally leapfrog Oscar. You know, Eddie Hearn right now is the, is the biggest boxing promoter in the world and the richest as well matron boxing you know and uh, not, the, the not, the, not the richest promoter but he is matron is the biggest guy in, in sport in yeah the biggest uh, Bro, there was a sport that came out this week right and at the end matron boxing right now is Fla- the richest at Flamengo is the richest no 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 i'm talking about boxing promoters as a yeah, yeah but, 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 but what is a, as a promoter if, Bro, if you if you say, if you say boxing promotional company, yeah, Matrum is. They, yeah, yeah, that's what I'm saying. They 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 yeah, they, 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 they leapfrog they leapfrog the Golden Boy and they Top Rank and, and PBC. Top PBC is even third, I guess. Even PBC, exactly. Even yeah. PBC is richer than than uh, Golden, Boy, Golden yeah. Boy, right? Yeah. Now. So what Oscar should be doing is align with these other guys. You know, make great fights. There's no need for jealousy. There's no need for hatred. There's no need to be saying people are. Oh, I'm not going to allow people come into my territory. If you if you have that kind of attitude, what's going to happen is that they will actually come to that territory and they will literally wipe you out of your territory. You know, because you can't isolate yourself. It's impossible. That also happened to PBC. PBC was a great company. You know, um, but then uh, um, due to isolation and all of that, um, Al Amon and all the rest of them. You know, look at where they are right now. And with the way boxing is going in this direction, Tokyo Al Sheikh and these Saudi guys, 
I think what they're trying to do really is to take over the sport of boxing completely. You know, watch it. Within a few years, they're going to start having their own belts. They already have a pact with WBA right now, where, in a way, for me, I think they're buying WBA over. You know, where WBA will basically advertise real season on all their magazines and all their promos and all of these things. So I think that right now, you see, in a way, I'm happy with what is happening because we're seeing great fights. But in the long run, I, I truly, I still want to know the motive because no one is going to be investing this much money in the sport of boxing. They're not making half of the money they're investing back. Okay, I'm a businessman myself, and I know that I'm not going to put my money in something that I don't have a, I don't have a, a reason for putting my money into. So I believe that they are putting all these monies into the sport of boxing. What do they want out of it? Don't get me wrong. I, I'm enjoying it. I'm loving it. But at the end of the day, what do they really want out of this? You know, is it only because they want to drive a tourism to, to Saudi Arabia? Is that way, why they're spending this much money? Or do they have an ultimate plan of taking over boxing completely and then they will be in charge of boxing? They will have their own body. They will be the one now giving rankings and all of that. For me, that's kind of how I'm thinking. I'm just thinking out of the box because why would they be paying Joshua 50 million, Fury about 60 something million for his fight, his upcoming fight against Usyk? Usyk is going to be getting 40. So they're putting so much money and they're not going to make one third of this money is back. So what do they really want out of all this? Because what I would not want to see is for them to monopolize boxing in the, in the, in the coming years. I wouldn't want to see that. I, want, I still want competition. I still want stiff competition between promote, promoters. I don't, want to take, I don't want them to take it over completely. You know, where they take it over completely and they monopolize it. I don't want that. Because... <laughs> That's just my own view about that anyway. I'm enjoying it, so don't get me wrong. I'm totally enjoying, you know, what they're doing. I'm, I'm grateful. I'm seeing great fights. But in the long run, what are they trying to do? What are they trying to do? I will tell you what they're trying to do. They're trying to take, they're trying to uh, restructure boxing. And also, not just boxing, um, also other sports. Listen, Turkey Lashik, for example, is the owner of Ameria, yeah? He's just the owner. Yeah, I know that. I'm Ameria. Uh, yeah. PIF, Public Investment Investment Fund of Saudi Arabia, is the owner of Newcastle, a club in, uh, in, in, in England. You know, of the club that was big. The club had no hope. They, they were there, yeah, yeah, they were the there in the yeah. in the 70s, the 80s or so, but, like, they became a... Uh, uh, a, a seaside team, and now they they, they have hope again. No, okay, it didn't really become a seaside team, but I get, I get what you're trying to say. But yeah, well, you know. well, that's what I'm saying. Like they've been battling rele- relegation for the past few years, or not? No, 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 no. They only went relegated once, and they came back to the Premier League. Yeah, no. but they've, they've been, been yeah, but, but they've, they've made a big now anyway. Okay, that's if what if say. they if they came, okay, if they always did, they, they what was the last time Newcastle finished? Uh, uh let's say ceased. Or seven in the Premier League. Two seasons, about two, three seasons ago, because they made it for Champions League. No, no, no. no. So. But I'm, I'm too proud to proud to Saudis coming. Ah, uh-uh. have you forgotten that they played in Europa League when Patrick Kluivert was there? Yeah, because it's a big club, you know. Bro, you know, I'm not. Club. Pa- Patrick Kluivert, Clu- Clu- bro. How, how long? How long was it? Uh, how, how many has that been, bro? Years ago, years ago, but uh, what are because you asked me a question that when when was the last time they've always been on a round Premier League, but you know, always fighting relegation battles basically. Bro, the they even they even had a, a owner where the club the fans turned against the owner and then they went even attending, uh, uh they stopped even attending matches. You know, they a lot a lot of them were giving the, a lot of them were giving the uh, away ticket, uh, giving the uh, uh, tickets away. I mean, I even yeah, saw not, it wasn't of this. Because, it wasn't because of, you know, do you know why Newcastle? Do you know who actually owned Newcastle before the sold it? It was a Ma- won- Mike Ashley or something, the guy named yeah. Mike Ashley. Yeah. So he's not like he's, a, he's not skinned for money. You know what I mean? So according to Just, Sean McQueen, he said that was two decades ago. That, that two decades ago. 
that they got into uh, Champions League be prior to the Saudis, bro. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. We keep it. This is bro. I what I'm saying is that they're not a C class team, like you said. They're not like a C C class is like you're talking about teams that plays in um, say conference league or league one. No, they're not that. Bro, they you haven't they, 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 they haven't even got to that point. They 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 were they, were, they weren't even near that point. They were for for what what the world was like it was like hallelujah uh position. Like whatever happens, happens, bro. That was that was the position no. they they were they were in. Bro, do, you, do you understand the the, the 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 tiers in the in in, in 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 England in terms of the leagues? So you have the Premier League, you have the Championship, yeah. So Premier League is like A class, yeah, and then Championship is like B class. Then C tier is like League One, and then you have League Two, and then you have Conference. I know, I'm not so ranking it by tiers. I'm saying C class team, meaning teams that. You cannot compare okay, to like Man Ma United. You cannot compare to okay, even okay, even yeah, even yeah. even bright even bright. Okay, Man City, for example, came from a, a C-class team, right? They 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 were hopeless before the Abu Dhabi. Is that Abu Dhabi that bought them? Yeah, Abu Dhabi. Yeah, yeah, right. So it's the same thing. I'm, it's Newcastle. I'm saying. I'm not saying that they weren't a good. They weren't, they, they, they weren't a good team, but it was no investment, bro, in the in that in that yeah, club yeah, or the no team. Investment. Yeah, like yeah. or in the stadium or everything I, that's what i i read basically because i follow newcastle a lot after the saudis got them i just want to see what transformed but somehow they've they have they transformed a lot in that club so what i'm saying is that and also mm. they bought the you know the pga tour the golf you know golf pga tour yeah, yeah of course when they refuse yeah. they refuse to do business with the pif what did they do they bought it off they brought up mm. the best players of pga to they brought I think the only person that refused was uh, uh was this uh this this popular guy's name a golf a golfer uh, uh, it's very popular but I don't forget his name more. very popular basically the if you mention golf is the first guy I'm not a golf fan so the guy name I don't, I don't forget him. is it Marco Roy that the Irish no no guy? no 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 this is uh this is basically okay now nah, nah, black guy. Um, Tiger Woods. Uh, yes, Tiger Woods. Nine, nine, nine. Tiger Woods. So they, that I think he's one of the only guys that refused. Then, but no, he had, but, but 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 when he refused, when Saudi bought it over, then when they merged, uh, give leave golf and PGA Tour together. So well, they had to go and bought. It's just one of those things. Mm. Is what I'm saying. Like, I don't know what the ultimate goal, what the ultimate goal is, but when yeah. it comes. Boxing is our sport. It's the sport we love. Yeah. It's the sport we follow. It's the sport we adore. And we know how politics have been... Listen, politics have been, has ravaged this sport, bro, for a long time. The other, this yeah, guy yeah. would say, we had... Bro, it's not here we had PBC boys, uh, Matron boys, Frank, uh, Queensberry boys, mm. Top Rank boys, where... We hardly see good. We hardly see these guys come together and mash up, mash their fighters uh, with it, against each other. And we were here when Josh, when Joshua, and Wilder was the hottest topic in boxing, bro. We didn't get that fight. Man, anytime I think about that fight, man, it hurts me because we, they really I, have I was Team Joshua. You, I don't know what, what team you were. I think it was Team Joshua. I was Team Joshua. Yeah. You had people uh, uh, or another side of the street, uh, Team Wilder, and we we're going against. We we're rubbishing. Each other's like, we're rubbishing their their achievement. We we bro, I wanted to say that fight, but I I didn't know who to, I, I was like because I was Steve Joshua. I was just yeah. I didn't even see it from a logical point and say oh what has to come is the A side B side. All the A side B side stuff doesn't get fight made. And yeah, I see what you're saying is true because even now if they do that fight, to be honest, I'm not as excited anymore. You to see, be honest, because you see, uh, if, Joshua, if Joshua knocks him out, am I really going to give Joshua the credit? So, 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 so imagine, imagine the Saudis came on board. Like I said, took a like cheek because uh, Prince Khalid is not really a boxing fan. You can tell it was an. It's just an. It, they just wanted to put up good, event, great events. But took a like cheek, although he doesn't have much time to live. He's a real boxing fan, bro. I think Roberto mm. Duran, R- Roberto Duran is his favorite fighter. Usually, people choose Muhammad Ali, stuff like that, Mike Tyson, or Marvin Hagler. Roberto Duran, bro, being his favorite fighter is crazy. And he hosts, he invite Roberto Duran to Saudi, and I think is they've been taking good care of, bro. I don't know what the ultimate goal is, but one thing I know is that Tokyo Lashik doesn't have much to live. They have much long to live. 
And I don't know if, if they are doing it to console him or to make him say, I don't know. But one thing I know is that I'd rather have fires get made hmm, than to have all this back and forth. Okay, look at the card. For example, look at the card he ha- he just put in. Is he just put in in the US? I know that. Bro, that have you choose, that, Haven't you seen how stacked that card is, bro? That card is mad. Honestly, that card is absolutely crazy. Jesus, that card is mad. You know, that bro, card is crazy. it is an enormous card, basically. No, like, like I said, I, I enjoy, I like what he's doing. I just hope that they don't monopolize boxing. Do you get so what how saying? would they monopolize I, boxing? Bro, money can monopolize anything, bro. I don't think they are taking over the governing bodies because you have to understand that those governing bodies, the WBA, I think is the oldest of all and it's been on standby for over 100 years, right? If I'm not, if I'm not oh. mistaken. So they don't just monopolize and stuff like that. But one thing is that we do need to have a, a universal like governing body at least yeah, yeah, yeah. so that if a champion on the other side of the street is acting up and doesn't want to unify well the governing body can say man you either have to fight that guy or you know you vacate ufc for example then a white controls everything right okay that's a that's a monopoly uh, 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 that's a monopoly right there right Absolutely. yes or no yeah you see yeah, great yeah. you see great fights every every weekend basically or one of it every two weekends they put on great cars but of course the fighters don't get paid enough in boxing that's not the case because boxers are independent basically so there's no way yeah. you can monopolize that what you have to do is to pay the fighters money to fight to 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 challenge each other and then the so government bodies do their job so there's no way they would do that this is a little bit off topic. I just want to. I just wanted to ask you this question real quick. I don't know if Adewale, Adewale wants to say something about it as well. Yes. Yeah. Gano, yeah. Gano yeah. asked for the winner between Wilder and um, Jilly Jang. Seriously, as much as I respect him, Gano, what's wrong with him though? To be honest, <laughs> what's wrong with that guy? Seriously. Okay, bro. Let, let me let me respond to that bit. Um, Ungano, I, I don't blame him for what he's doing. I mean, if you get paid $30 million in six months after having a very hard life, you will you, you, you have a tendency to seek for more money, you know, in a short way. So he sees this Saudi opportunity. If he can get in the mix and fight the winner or the loser of any one of these big names, and he will get paid big money. It's all about the money for Francis Ngannou, Bro, as far as boxing is concerned. The rest of his life um, dealing with issues, health issues, or enjoy his money. I was genuinely scared for him. Like, that knockout, I was scared. Now imagine a guy like Wilder. Wilder hits, in my own view, yeah? In terms of one punch, in one punch knockout, he hits other than Joshua. Okay? Joshua combination, great, and all of that. See, look we, at what we, we, we don't know that yet, bro. Well, okay. Well, uh, we don't know that yet. The reason why we say we don't know that yet is because Joshua doesn't really focus on eating you with one right hand to knock you out. But we know that when he did against Ungano, he he, he knocked him out cold. That Wilder looks for that right hand to knock you out. He looks for it. Joshua doesn't okay. look for it. So yeah. if you look, if you're a fighter looking for it, it's different. I mean, at the world, maybe yeah. I'm wrong. You can uh, give it a take. Let's even say he eats harder or they eat about the same or whatever. I don't even care. Any more of that kind of knockout you can't send this guy. <laughs> Seriously, this guy can really, really damage his, his health, man. Seriously. You shouldn't Bro, be fighting any of those. Yeah, you're right. You're right. You're right. But on this card, though, uh, Virgil Ortiz and Team Zoo is official now. Ortiz defeated Delome um, last weekend and he knocked he knocked him out cold. Dropped him with body shots. It was nasty, bro. But the one that, that is very intriguing is the Andrews Junior Jeremy Miller fight. Adewale, what do you have to say about that before our brother um, our Joe comes back? See, I'll, I'll tell you what. In that there are so many great fights coming up on that card, man. I'm not even... Even though the Ruiz 
Jarrell Miller fight is a very entertaining fight. It's going to be entertaining for sure. But there are still more fights that I'm more intrigued about, like Tim Zhu versus Virgil Ortiz. Man, that fight is going to be like a nuclear bomb. As, as a cruise me. against Jose Venezuela. What? Yeah, Cruz as, versus Venezuela is a great fight, man. David, I feel like, honestly, David Venezuela is a pretty power punch. Versus right? Rajo Kala Josefish. Come on, man. I'm not even able to complete what, one. What, talking what, about what, one fight, what, what, I hear what, about what, another what, great one. What, what did you say? What did you Bro, say? Like, there are so many great fights on no, this you, card. You said it, something that I think I need to respond to. I don't know. No, yeah. no, 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 no. Bro, I'm just excited about this fight. I'm expressing how excited I am about this fight card coming up in August. There are so many good fights. Um, You asked me about Jarrell Miller and Andy Ruiz. That's going to be a good fight. Andy, Andy has been inactive for so long. So uh, we saw Miller. He shook off the rust against an unknown opponent before facing Daniel Dubois. He lost to Dubois, but... I wouldn't say he totally made a bad account of himself because he was he had a little bit of stamina issues and that's partly because he came in 300 pounds. But then again, he showed durability. He showed mental fortitude and that's why he lasted up until the 10th round, I believe. So based on activity level, Jarrell Miller has the advantage. Based on skill level, raw skill level, I think... Andy might be a better boxer than Jarrell Miller, but Jarrell Miller brings volume. He throws 800 punches in a 12-round fight. That's the kind of fighter that Jarrell Miller is. And he's a big guy, very, very big. So he's walking forward, leaning on you, and throwing multiple punches with a good cardio. Ruiz, on the other hand, he has a good timing, good speed when he decides to let off the combination, good footwork. Ruiz is a slightly more skilled fighter, uh, but based on the activity levels, I would say it's a 50-50 fight. And this is the heavyweight division. Anything can happen. So I would say it's a 50-50 fight. Very entertaining. What do you think about it? Bro, I'm looking at this card right here. I think Isaac Cruz and Jose Venezuela can easily be a headliner, basically. A main event. Mm. Uh, Team Zoo, Veggie Otis, is, I think that is the actual main event in a way. Not the actual main event, but I mean... That is like the fight right there. The fight right there. Because uh, Crawford Madrimov is a banger, but Madrimov, because of the unknown about Madrimov, on Madrimov has 10, 10 wins, right? 11 percent of fights, 10 wins, and 7 knockouts. Crawford is a powerful, is the powerful punk king, two way, divi two way division uh, champion, you know, undisputed as well, and is going for his third. That would three weights. That, Three weights, bro. Is it, is it three weights? 135, 140, 147. Is it three weights? Yeah. I thought it's two. So I mean, this would make it... So it's going 154. This is his fourth to make it, division. To make it fourth. Yeah. Oh, wow. I didn't know that. I thought it, I thought he was, he was only on display for two in, in two weeks, bro. I didn't know that. Yeah, that, oh, wow. that guy is a real, is a real great fighter, man. 14 0 bro, in 10 fights... I think the best thing that happens to him is this is Tokyo Electric because right now he's going to be active. But that 40 year old, he does the shake for Mayweather. Maywe that 50 and old, that 50 and old record. No, bro, check you. Um, Crawford, in my own opinion, has better achievements than Mayweather, man. Crawford, ah, Crawford, Crawford know, has I, been undisputed. I, I, I don't know about that. Wait, the names. Yeah. Mayweather has no. more big names on his See, resume. Mayweather, Mayweather had maybe 25 world title fights and he was world champion in like four or five divisions. But in terms of undisputed in two weight classes, it's never been done. Yeah, oh, but, no, my bad. but it's been May done actually. It's been done. But Mayweather, but Mayweather, Mayweather didn't want to be. Era, it's never been done. But so Mayweather, didn't, May Mayweather didn't want to become undisputed. Yeah, because Mayweather was strategically picking and choosing opponents. No, bro. Who, who was May Floyd? Mayweather. When, when did Floyd Mayweather fight his own Errol Spence? Who was Floyd Mayweather's Errol Spence? That was Manny Pacquiao. You know and you how have, did that fight go? You know you have to. It wasn't of, even a, It was you know running have, around the ring, bro. You know you have two errors of Mayweather: the pretty boy uh, Floyd. And then money me with it. They are two different uh, no, fights. It, it's it, I, I agree with you, brother. I agree with you. But when Crawford fought Errol Spence, it's equivalent to when Floyd fought Manny Pacquiao because of their age. If you okay. think about their age, well, yeah, if, and the number of fights on their record, it was similar. 
Crawford fought um, Manny when he was like 35, 36. Terence Crawford beat Errol Spence when he was like 36. You know? And then from that point on, after Manny Pacquiao, we never saw Floyd in any other tough fight. He only picked guys like, um, um, I can't even remember the guys he fought, man. Conor McGregor, Andre Berto. No disrespect to Andre Berto, man. But we, you're having Terence Crawford right now. He's going to go fight a killer from Uzbekistan. People are sleeping on this guy that he's about to fight, man. This Mad guy is like Mad nine Mad years Mad younger Mad than Mad. Terence Crawford. And he can punch. But Crawford is more skilled. So he has what it takes to get the victory. But don't sleep on that guy. It's a 50-50 fight, man. Yeah, man. Now, Joe, what about your take? Um, the thing is, uh, we don't know the version of Andy Ruiz we're going to get. Um, this guy has not had a fight for two years. Um, Gerard Miller, without the Jews, he has not been throwing that many punches in a fight. Um, and that was evidence in the Daniel Dubois fight. Even before Daniel Dubois, Gerard Miller has not been throwing that many punches. So, um, as far as I'm concerned, um, Gerard Miller, without the Jews, all he has got is his weight, you know just use his weight to try and bully his opponents. So, um, so that fight, I'll just say it's a 50-50 because Darren Miller will not be able to keep up. He will not be able to throw that many punches. He has got a good gas tank. You know, he will go the 10 rounds or the 12 rounds. But what will happen after about five rounds, he will stop throwing. And you and I know Okay, I don't want to have to mute it. Yeah, continue, Majo. Yeah, okay, so we have Continue, Majo. But now that Andy Ruiz, now that Andy Ruiz has not had a fight for two years, to be honest, I don't even know what to expect from Andy Ruiz. I don't know how he's going to perform because two years is a awful long time and that's a long time to be out of the ring you know so um it will be 50 50. um in terms of activity like i just said i'll give that edge to jaron miller he has been fighting and in terms of skill level i'll give it to andy ruiz as per the andy ruiz with neil two years ago um but um with less activity um, we don't know how it's going to perform. It would have been nice for, uh, for Andy Ruiz to quickly have a fight, even if it's just a gimme fight. Just get on, on any card, get paid small money for it, very small money, if possible, fight for free, if possible, just to get you know some of the cobwebs out of his system um, before going into the Jerry Miller fight. But he's going straight into that fight, so I don't know what to expect. So in that case, I'll say 